Hi. 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 Happy Shorty September. Happy Shorty September. Um, it's the end of week one. Mm. It's the seventh today. Obviously, you've been following along Heather's daily vlog journey, which is, she is Shorty September, really. Um, but we thought we would do a bit of a roundup, catch up of books we've read this week. Yeah, and then we'll start a vlog. We're going to start afterwards. a vlog. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's been loads of people taking part though in Shorty September, haven't there? So there's many videos to watch yeah. and pictures to look at. Thank you so much. On here and on Instagram, there's lots of people as yeah. well, aren't there? I've yeah. made a playlist, which I think I've added most people onto, which I will just leave in the description as well. Yeah. If, you if want you've to made do one and haven't, you yeah. can't see it on our playlist, please let us know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, keep going, everyone. It's It seems to be like being successful. People are enjoying yeah. themselves. That's the main thing. Shorty's forever. Books are getting read. Short books yeah. are coming off of people's TBRs. The Wales based readathon. This is the, the first Wales based readathon. <laughs> of our knowledge, but yeah. it's true. <laughs> uh. So, Shani. Yeah. How many books have you read? How many shorties? Yeah. Okay, so you know I'm not doing one a day, and it's the seventh. Yeah. I've read ten. But I feel like I'm like slowing <laughs> down now. Your face. Your face. <laughs> I feel um, like I'm slowing it down. Yeah, as long as by the last week you have a slow down and a mm -hmm. rest, so you yeah. don't ruin. The whole plan is for Sean not to ruin her October reading. Yeah, horror so Halloween. We've got plans for October. Like last, last year, last year is too slumpy. Yeah, so we're going to keep an eye on that last week. But yeah. she, she's gone wild this first week. Yeah, yeah. I've read four shorties. That's pretty good, isn't it? Pretty good for me. Yeah, good. yeah. And then. Um, how have you been doing sticking to your TBR? I uh, I'm being very um, liberal with my TBR. Um, I'm just kind of mood reading, um, picking what I fancy. Um, one of the books I just kind of read, when I bought when I was in um, Shelf Life, and I've read that. Yeah. Um, so I'm not really going necessarily by my original TBR, but although I will stick be sticking to that, and I'll try and get all mm -hmm. the prompts done. So I seem to have done a couple of the prompts twice. Oh, um, okay. So I've got quite a few of the other prompts to, yet to do. I've done six out of ten. Uh, six out of twelve. That's really good. And six out of the ten I've read, yeah. week one, that's really good. Yeah. Do you want to talk about your non-shorty book first? Yeah, so a book I've been reading for quite a while, and yeah. then um, which has influenced the shorty TBR, is this one, which is um, Eat Your Mind, The Radical Life and Work of Kathy Acker by Jason McBride. So it's like a biography of Kathy Acker. Um, I've finished it this month i've read it really slowly but i've been i really loved it i gave it five stars she loved it yeah i loved yeah. it i thought it was amazing and it kind of really made me want to read some more i'd read a kathy Acker like years ago yeah. and it made me kind of want to re read them yeah because read i remember them. like you know quite a few years ago kathy Acker came up in a conversation and Sean was like oh, i've read one i'm not really yeah because they're quite harsh i think there's yeah a, there's a they're a bit uncomfortable and yeah. quite harsh um, but I felt like this book made me, you know, I think his whole thing is to, like, put her into, um, give her her dues as a writer. Yeah. Um, and I think the whole way that he described them as being, like, an experience and yeah. um, they're not necessarily linear. She There's an interview I read somewhere else where she says you don't have to read them as a book even. Yeah. So, they're, yeah, it's the experience rather yeah, than... Yeah, they're, like, conceptual Yes, works. yeah. 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 So this is great. If you've got any interest in Kathy Acker, I thought this was a great biography. So that's that one. And then I started my Shorty September, um, which was on my list. It was on my um, Shorty Shorts. Right. And Heather's also read this one, which was yeah. um, New York City in 1979. And it's just a short story yeah. from Kathy Acker, um, a tale of art, sex, blood, junkies and whores in New York's underground from cult literary icon Kathy Acker. Um, it's got pictures in it as well. I give it four stars. Um, I think the writing's amazing, even if I didn't like hundred percent enjoy the story kind of yeah. thing. But I think I think her writing's great. I've been just really into her writing. Sounds having a moment of I'm having Catholic. a yeah. Um, it's actually I think the first time it was published was in this, so I've accidentally got it twice. Hannibal Lecter, my father, and yeah, nineteen eight nineteen eighty one. I don't know. Copyright 1951, yeah. But it says about the story. Anyway, I hope you're reading. Hannibal Lecter, my father. Look at that. We'll keep going. Keep going? It makes sense for you to talk about the next one. This was not on my TBR, but it's on no. Kathy Acker. So it's Great Expectations by Kathy Acker. 
one of the things she did was just use text from other books yeah. in her work. I don't think there's that much of Great Expectations. It starts the same, but I read it for Great Expectations ages ago. Yeah, so but from my memory, there's not much else other than that. Um, yeah, I love love this too. Gave this yeah. four stars as well. Um, well, I um, was kind of halfway through a book as we went into September, which wasn't ideal, but I did finish it, um, and that is Death at the Bar by Nao Marsh. Uh, yeah, I loved this. This was great. Um, so it's not quite a shorty, it's like, but it is under 250 pages, so it kind of qualifies. But um, yeah, it's kind of Golden Age Detective, yeah, Inspector Allen. Um, and he's got like a kind of a Watson type sidekick figure. It's really, really good mystery. I love the setting in that it kind of a lot of it's set in the pub and the inspector goes and stays in the pub. I really liked it. I'm looking, definitely going to read some more Nao Marsh. It's like one of my favourites uh, of that era that I've read. Um, very cosy. We forgot to say we're in the heat wave, didn't we? We've got the fan on and we're still sweating. It's a nightmare. <laughs> Absolute nightmare. <laughs> Okay, my next one, um, I bought for TBR and then realised I didn't need it, but it's Notes on Camp by Susan Sontag. I think I bought it for Modern Classic and then realised that I already had one. So yeah. um, it kind of, I ended up reading this because Susan Sontag was mentioned in the Kathy Acker book, so I just thought mm -hmm. it kind of floated along with it. Yeah. Um, I thought this was really good. I've not, I don't know if I've, oh, I've read like her one on photography, I think. Yeah. Um, but I've not read much by Susan Sontag. The essay, there's two essays. Oh, also a moth. <laughs> there's two essays. There's Notes on Camp and then One Culture and the New Sensibility. Both are really good. I thought the, but they're quite old, I guess. Yeah, what books are they from, does it say? Oh, no. No. But they're from, like, uh, 1961. Oh, okay. Um, Typeset is done in Milton Keynes. Yes, they are done in Milton Keynes, <laughs> Um, so yeah, 1961. So it kind of, whereas the camp thing was really interesting, it just references loads of stuff that yeah. I had no idea, yeah. you know, what they were. So her explanations of camp were talking yeah. about stuff I didn't yeah. know about. But it was, I thought it was really good. So yeah. that's that little one. Um, so my first official uh, shorty yeah. that I picked up oh, was I'm excited to hear you talk about Giovanni's this one. Room by James Baldwin. Is part of the those like, great loves sort of books. They're really nice. Um, Jess sent us the box set of these. So this is a book that I've always meant to read. I did read. Um, well, I did pick up uh, Another Country by James Baldwin. I keep seeing James Baldwin like snippets of James Baldwin on social media. So like you hear like him in interviews. He's really eloquent. He's the smartest man in the room. He's so ahead of his time. So I kind of really have always really wanted to like him. Have you know a huge amount of respect for what he says. Um, but Another Country was just it's just so misogynistic that I had to put it down. Um, and I felt that this is a thing that is not ever discussed when it comes to James Baldwin. I, don't know yes. I did read The um, Fire Next Time, which I enjoyed. Um, mostly, I think it got a bit boring towards the end. Um, but So I kind of went in second chance, you know, romance with uh, <laughs> Giovanni's Room. Um, and I really liked, like, the first, you know, 50 odd pages I was really in, I was loving it. I love the His writing of, is really good, isn't his it? Writing's yeah, good. Um, it's set in sort of Paris, so it's about an expat, uh, American expat in Paris, you know, the bars, being like on your own in Paris. Um, uh, but um, but then it sort of started to drift off for me with like lots of stuff, um, like sort of anti women stuff in there. A, a lot of sort of, you know, and I guess because of the time it was written and this is the 50s, there seems to be a lot of sort of gay shame or like self hate in there as well. Um, and yeah, the character of sort of Giovanni was um, really kind of not not very nice. You know, he was like, yeah, he sort of says stuff about beating women. That he should beat women. Um, and and yeah, so the whole tone sort of changed for me through that a little bit. And by the end, I kind of felt like I've read similar things better. I, yeah, I don't want to put, I don't want to hate on James Baldwin on on the channel because he's a really important voice. Like this is a milestone book. But um, I think we can you can hold both of those things, isn't but yeah, it? Yeah, I don't think we should. A, yeah, it's an important book. Yeah, it's doing great stuff. It's also misogynistic. That's yeah. okay, yeah. isn't it? You yeah, know? It's, uh, exactly. And like we shouldn't let one thing go because no. like other boxes are ticked. You know, so yeah. I mean, I th I think sort of similar with the 
with these Kathy Acker ones, they're, yeah. in a sense, they're a little bit dated and they're quite harsh. And, yeah. um, and you know, I was talking to a friend of mine and she really hadn't liked one of the books. And, yeah. the, you know, these people aren't awful people, are they? They're just writers, kind of. It's yeah. not like it's, a, it's humans, not the Morrissey it? situation. <laughs> well, I, yeah, my feeling is like they're all just kind of humans. Yeah, uh, they're flawed. From other times. Yes, yeah. Um, like anyone. And, you know, flawed. they might be breaking ground in a huge number of ways and they're yeah. still really behind in other ways. And like how Star Trek yeah. didn't feel it could have yeah, women. Yeah, we were just going, we were watching the a... Star Trek the other day and, and yeah, it's still like Yuhura is still basically the secretary and <laughs> he's like the yeoman is the, uh, the female and, you know, so yeah. Um, yeah, it's weird. It's interesting to look back and sort of see how like someone could be so advanced in one way and still not have questioned this other part of their belief system. Mm. Um, and I guess we will seem the same to generations to come. So we have to sort of give people a bit of slack, you know. Yeah. I think. Um, yeah. So yeah, and but then I, it's also but it's also okay for you not to like that as well, isn't it? Totally, or for it to yeah. affect your reading yeah. of it. It's all fine. I always say that I was reading this um, during the day when I was working in Shelf Life Bookshop which is a radical bookshop um, in Cardiff. And I, you know, people, a couple of um, people came up to me to talk to me about the book just from seeing that I was reading it and asking, is that your first time reading it? And really excited for me to having this experience. And so it's obviously a book that means a lot to people. Yeah. And, you know, and that's, that's great. And you can't take that away from people, you know. But, um, but yeah, let's discuss James Baldwin's misogyny a bit more. Um, moving swiftly on to Clasgard. To Clasgard. <laughs> So this is my mom shorts one, her comfort read. So it's Letters to Knausgaard, so Dear Knausgaard, mm -hmm. um, by Kim Adrian. And she kind of writes these letters to him. They're not sent. Yeah. She, she talks at one point about, like, how she's kind of a bit embarrassed that he might read them. <laughs> yeah, do you think he's read that? I don't know. Oh, well, I would. If yeah, like I would yeah. too. And it's kind of just, it. I mean, it says sort of on the back that it's like a feminist critique. I don't. I don't really think it's much of a um, much of a critique in general. Yeah. Um, it's just more. It feels like quite feels quite light hearted, like yeah. quite jokey yeah. letters to him, but also kind of covers you know the stuff in the books. But you know, I felt like we had similar views yeah. about the books. Yeah, and, she loved the books. Yeah, she, she loves so, the books yeah. and kind of um, yeah. So we didn't really feel that much of a critique. She call, you know calls him out for stuff because yeah. like. All of what we're talking about, he's not perfect yeah, either. Yeah. Um, and she's just talking, I guess, about the experience of really loving the books and then having people in her life who don't love, <laughs> who don't love as well, like making her sister read one and her sister's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm done. A bit yeah. like me and you. Yeah, I nearly finished the first one. But... Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I thought it was, you know, it's quite light. It's quite sort of quite slight. And, but it's quite, and it's like... There's no point in reading this unless you've read all six of my struggles. Mm. So I guess yeah, it's kind of it's kind yeah. of niche. Yeah. But it's a good find for you though. Yeah, I really, I yeah. really did. I yeah. gave this one four stars as well. Oh, great. Nice one. Yeah. Do you want to do another one? Okay, my next one is a oh Pedro Pascal short. Oh right. Okay. Mm. Yeah. An unexpected purchase. Yeah. So that's um, that an unexpected purchase. Make you look cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. It does make me look cool as well. Double doubling up. So it's Death in Persia by Anna Marie Schwarzenbach. This is non-fiction from... Uh, it's really annoying when they don't really tell you when these things are from, isn't it? Like, originally. Oh, yeah. Because it probably wasn't released at the time, like you said, wasn't it? No. So, she lived... Oh, the, tri the trip she's talking about to Persia were taken between 1933 and 39. I think they're sort of, like, notes mm -hmm. from that time. Mm, yeah. I couldn't work out... I mean, this wasn't published in itself until no. recently yeah. I couldn't work out if they'd been published elsewhere because I think she did publish one book in her lifetime um, anyway she's a great writer I think really yeah. and it you know because I guess it's quite casual because maybe they're not meant to be being mm. um, printed um, I, yeah she's really great she's really fascinating it's interesting to have these things out and available isn't yeah, it and, like, that's all these years later. Uh, queer voice in the 30s is yeah. really really interesting she kind of falls in love. Oh, I told you about that bit, wasn't it? I'll read, can I read you that bit? When she falls in love with this um, woman called Jale. I don't know how to say the name, sorry. Um, but she says, When Jale and I saw one another for the first time, I was running a fever. My room was darkened by the old trees and thick bushes in the garden. It was five o'clock in the evening, a hot day in July. I was lying on my bed, shaking from the chills and waiting for the fever. 
Jale was pale. The blue powder on her eyelids made her eyes seem even bigger, her forehead even whiter. Artificial rouge lay like a sickness on her prominent cheekbones. I love that. It really puts you there, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, that kind of warmth of yeah. it. Yeah. So this is great. I, you know, great. Also, not for everyone. I don't yeah. think you know. It's like, <laughs> like you, you're aware by now that our books maybe not for everyone. <laughs> uh, next up, speaking of which, next up, um, I read "Caught in the Quiet" by Rod McEwen. Look at this lovely book. So that's Rod. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's like. I can't think of anything better than so that. So nice, cover. isn't it? It's yeah. beautiful. I'd say it was pleasing. Yeah, I just found this like super cheap bargain price, had to get it. Um, and yeah, I, I'm kind of fascinated by Rod McEwen. Let's discuss more Rod McEwen. I've for never a while. heard of him. He's like, he was in his day, so 60s, 70s, the best selling poet in the world. He was, I think, the first poet to sell like millions. Right. So he was like a household name, beloved. Um, it's also a songwriter, composer. Um, I'm not sure if he did any acting, but he's, you know, one of those I mean, sort with of... that face, he should have done. He should have done. He's great. Yeah. So I, I really admire Rod McEwen. Um, I like some of his poetry. Most of it is really lightweight and very surfacey. Um, but I'm kind of a little bit fascinated by that. So this book was not great. This was one of his bestsellers from, I think, like, 1970. Yeah, 1970. This is a reprint um, of that. So, I mean, for example, the first eight poems in this collection appeared in the magazine Woman's Day, which is like a, a woman's own type. Do you know what I mean? Like, this is what... Um, and, you know, this one's about uh, the end of a relationship. So, so it's very short, um, very short poems. The old illustration in there as well. Like, tiny little poems. Hardly anything, hardly any sort of below-the-surface sort of work going on. Very simplistic language. I'm just so interested in, like, what people saw in him and his poetry, and I, I kind of, like, I've started trying to find his records, because I quite like his spoken word with a bit of music, <laughs> quite lush, lush orchestration. I, it's kind of awful, kind of really cringy and bad, but I'm <laughs> so into it. So, two, two stars for this, but I would happily buy another one any any moment I saw one. So, very strange. I do like Rod as a person. I know that he um, was bisexual and uh, sort of um, did lots of AIDS uh, charity work in the 80s. Um, and released kind of a bit of a disco album in the late uh, oh late gosh. 70s. I so, love him now too. So yeah, I mean, thoughts on Rod? I put that, um, not sort of consciously, but after I'd read it, I put it as my comfort read, because Rod is my comfort oh, okay. read. Um, so yeah, that was Mom uh, Shorts. So my one for Hoochie Daddy Shorts, yeah. Spicy Read, oh, yeah. I went for Unreal Sex, which is your book, which is short stories, is on Cypher Press, and it's an anthology of queer, erotic, sci-fi, fantasy, and horror. Um, so the, it's a collection of short stories, which isn't always my favourite, because no. I guess it's, you know, some authors you gel with and some you no. don't. Um, it, the only authors I'd heard of, really, were um, Rachel Dawson, who's the Welsh writer who's in the book Neon Roses, mm -hmm. Um, and her her short story, it was like a little bit cheesy, yeah. but it was kind of having sex with a ghost, yeah. which we like. <laughs> and then also it's got an Alison Rumfit one in, which yeah. I've actually sort of forgotten. I think Alison Rumfit's always good, but I can't, good, yeah. can't really remember that much about it. But I quite like the first book, Swipe Right, Swipe Right for Non-Humans, about a woman who's um, in, a, in a spaceship and trying to date people. And she's... Um, She's date, trying to date guys, I think. Right, like on Earth? No, they're oh. also in space, it's but on the spaceship, right, okay. I think. But there's such a limited supply oh, of okay, them. Right, okay. And they're all awful that at some point then she decides to date non-humans. Yeah. It kind of, I felt like it could have gone further. Yeah. But I, re I thought yeah. that one was fun. That and there's good. like a bit where she kind of touches some kind of gooey stuff, which mm. I thought was pretty yeah. good. And then there was a couple of others I, I really enjoyed as well, actually. But I've kind of forgotten which ones they were. But some of them were... Some of them I thought were really, really fun, but it hasn't sort of stayed with me in general. But yeah, yeah I think you might enjoy yeah. some of them. I thought they could have been saucier. That is my. Yeah. Saucier and weirder. Yeah. 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 Hopefully that's uh, the thing. I do an anthology of <laughs> volume, volume two. Yeah. Um, do you want to go over another one? Okay, my next one I did was looking at my little book. 
Lederhosen, a translated book. Yeah. I read Weasels in the Attic. Sound like a bit of a slump here. Yeah, I was having such a great time. Yeah. I had such a great time, kind of, with these... With Cathy, basically. With Cathy, but with Anna Marie, with Susan, with all these ladies. Yeah. These were great. I was yeah. like, they were all four stars. Yeah. The writing was great. I yeah. was like, this is amazing. Shorty September's amazing. Well, you, like a bit of, you, you want it a bit edgy. You want it a little bit, like, tough, don't you? Yeah. yeah. And then I read Weasels in the Attic. And then it went downhill from Weasels yeah. in the Attic, really, to yeah. now. Um, this is... This is okay. This is by Hiroko Oyamada, translated by David Boyd. Um, the author wrote The Hole, I think, as well, yeah. and The Factory. Um, I thought the writing was good. It was in, it was enjoyable enough. What it is, though, is like almost like three interlinking stories rather than one whole oh, narrative. Okay. Didn't love that. Yeah. Um, uh, and it feels quite slight yeah, as it is well very slight, isn't it? Um, in what it was doing. But there was, I think I gave it like, I, I think I gave it like three. Yeah. It was, it was good. Yeah. Didn't really like do a whole lot for me. Are we thinking it's being missold with that cute cover? Less weasel, yeah. yeah. A little bit like Earthlings. It looks really cute and it wasn't cute and there wasn't even that much about we. I thought, okay, I thought this was going to be a book about weasels. Yeah. And the weasel, they were <laughs> weasels and they had characters. Yeah. Like, I thought it was going to be POV weasels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Genuinely. Yeah. No, and it's not. I knew it wasn't going to be that. <laughs> so that okay. was a disappointment. Right. That's sad, though. If it? it was, like, cute weasels living oh. in an attic having fun. I'm sad for you. It's not what no, it was. I'm, I'm, I'll try and find your book about weasels. For yeah. Theory. Should I do one more? Do another one, yeah. And then the next one I did was Spanx, um, book with magical witchcraft. So I read Salt Goes Heavy, Cassandra Core. I didn't like this at all. Um, I think this was maybe a style thing. Yeah. I didn't really like the right. I wasn't into the writing style. It's really overblown. Yeah. And a bit too much for me. I think that's a bit of a hit or miss with a lot of people. I know Heather gave this five stars. Oh, I know I Ollie really enjoyed it as well. Yeah. So I think it's one that you might really like. But yeah. um, I think if it wasn't a short book, I would have DNF'd. But because it was short, I just I'll just carry on. But I kind of the ending I thought was sort of interesting. It sort of dragged a little and then it ha I quite liked the ending yeah. but um, fancy writing I didn't really like yeah. that one like whenever anyone sort of mentions anything being written poetically I was, I'm just out straight away yeah yeah I don't want, po I don't want poetic writing unless it's poppy bright. yeah not, that's not poetic so maybe it yeah, is yeah maybe it is it's probably gothic you gothic like, isn't it? yeah different yeah um, so my trajectory's kind of been different actually. I kind of like have gone up, ah. chances have sort of gone down. So next up, I was in the bookshop on the weekend, and um, I've been wanting to read a Fear Street book for ages since these reissues have started coming out. And this was in the you know, middle grade section in the shop, so I, I bought it and started reading it. And I was trying to sort of still reading this at the time, and I, was, I kept like looking over at this one like. <laughs> So this is R.L. Stein. Uh, this one's called Night Games. I'm not sure which number in the series it is, but I think it's like 20 odd. It's a lovely cover, isn't it? Lovely reissue. Yeah, I don't think they've actually done that many reissues, and they're not doing it like from the beginning to like the end, so they just kind of, I don't know, I hope they do more of them. Um, this is about uh, <laughs> some, it's a group of kids in school, and and like um, their mate, who they haven't seen for a year, who's kind of dropped out of school and he's sort of climbing out of this window and they're like what are you doing he's like I do night games uh, he just goes around at night by himself and like has the town to himself and does like adventures and gets off to naughty like stuff like Bob Mortimer's story <laughs> yeah it is <laughs> um, yeah well, can we link, we link Bob Mortimer's story down by um, and then he said do you want to join in so the group start doing night games the night games start getting a bit more intense uh, it's a thriller it's a thrill ride um, I just enjoyed it. it had such sort of 90s um, YA kind of uh, you know feelings you could t t definitely see this as a kind of like a I know what you did last summer okay. type you know 90s film um, and that, that's a recommendation enough I'd say so I gave that four stars oh yeah, yeah. I just got two others yeah. um, which weren't on my TBR um, I, this one uh, Misfits First of All Manifesto by Michaela Cole. Um, I didn't quite realise who Michaela Cole was when I bought it, but uh, she's like writer and actor um, in they like, did Chewing Gum, if you've sort of seen that, yeah. and some other stuff. And she was in, invited to talk 
to give a talk, like to give a lecture. Um, and this is the lecture at the McTaggart Lecture at Edinburgh International Film Festival. Um, so it says it's arousing, coming to Power Manifesto, dedicated to anyone who's ever worried about fitting in. I did think it was it was good. Mm -hmm. um, I think I gave it like three and a half stars at the end. In the end, um, even though it says obviously what it is on the back, I didn't really read it and I didn't yeah. quite realise it was a lecture. And I feel like yeah. sometimes these things, I just think like that would probably it's probably going to be more powerful if I just watch it. Well written. I thought it was in, you know mm. interesting. One one thing I didn't like they kept doing like this so they'd. You know, you've got the text, and then they take a section of the text and put it in. I know. Yeah. I mean, partly I liked it because you just that's like a that magazine page. article. You yeah. have to read the bit in big. Well, I didn't. I just skipped it. Yeah. I already read it. Yeah. But there's quite a bit of that just to yeah. fill the book. But yeah, it was. I liked it. it. Didn't kind of blow me away or anything, but yeah. it was was kind of interesting. And then my last one um, is this one, which I was going to use for my half and half shorts. Oh yeah. But I've got a different one now. Um, a better so, one though. Yeah, yeah, so this is Now Go on Grief and Studio Ghibli by Carl Thomas Smith um, and talking about how grief uh, shows up in the, in the films. Yeah. Um, I thought it could have been way better. I was a bit disappointed in this one. I, can't, I think I've given it three stars. It didn't really give me a whole lot. Yeah. Um, but like someone I saw on Goodreads said, five out of five stars because it's on four or four inklings and it's an independent Scottish press. But in yeah. reality, I think it was three. Yeah, it's nice that these things are out there, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And I, I'm often, you know, I've enjoyed some of these because they do kind of take like a little angle on something yeah. and then just run with it. And I think yeah. that's really interesting. It's a great uh, premise, isn't it? This didn't work for me. I think yeah. other people have liked it, though, so it might work for you. And that's as far as I've got so far. Uh, so I just finished um, Rhode Island Red by Charlotte Carter. This is the first in the Nanette Hayes mysteries. I don't think there's only three of them, which is a massive shame because this is brilliant. I loved it. Um, yeah, kind of detective um, story. Not really. She's not a detective, but it's kind of you know like a crime solving kind of thing. What does she look like? She uh, it's almost not how like the cover has done her like this but she describes herself as Grace Jones looks like Grace Jones but with bigger boobs <laughs> um, I really liked Nanette Hayes she was a great character I thought the writing was brilliant um, I thought this sort of had lots of kind of um, awareness considering this was written in the, the 90s like it felt kind of really modern in its point of view so yeah it's just really nice to have like you know so the author's uh, a black woman it's really nice to have that perspective in uh, a, a genre which is kind of quite sort of white dominated you know so it has a whole other take on on that sort of uh, sort of noir storytelling um she's really into jazz which i loved um she's really funny um yeah she's you know it's sort of quite sexy in places um it's kind of rollicking you know it's a good time read um, you thought even I might like it. I thought, yeah, actually, you would like it. Even so, I don't so like you don't ha necessarily have to like sort of crime novels. Yeah. I feel like you know the, the the crime story, the sort of mystery, kind of keeps you rolling. But um, I, I felt like the writing was strong enough and the characters were strong enough to just enjoy it for that. Um, I'm definitely going to carry on reading the, the second one. So yeah, I like all the chapters are kind of named by are named after sort of uh, jazz oh. and, uh, jazz uh, tracks. Oh, that's um, good. She's really into. Um, Monk, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, great. Highly recommend. Um, yeah, this should be more well known, I think. Yes. So yeah, so that I, I put as my um, as a rip shorts mystery or slasher, um, and that was of my initial TBR as well. So that's going pretty well. So I'm definitely pick something from there next. To get through it. And that's it. That's week one done. Week one so far. Oh, that's a hot head. Hot head, right? <laughs> Catch you soon. See you soon. Happy shorty.